Hello and welcome to another Blender Cookie tutorial. This is David Ward and in this tutorial we're going to go into part two of our island creation. Um, so as you can see the, when we last finished with part one uh, we had created the ocean and the little white caps around it, the breakers and everything, the uh, island itself and the sand and, and dirt and rock and everything. So uh, we're ready to start moving on. Before we do that though I would like to edit this just a little bit. Um, looks like maybe the the foam around the island, the breakers and everything is just a little bit too visible for as relative as we are. We're, the island is supposed to be really big and, and from here it doesn't look that big so we, if we decrease the the uh, the blaring in your face color of, of the breakers there that'll help out and then also we can make the overall island a little shorter and so relatively speaking it'll make it look like it's spreading out on the, around the bottom. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. Uh, let's come out of texture view so we can do this. And before I go any further, let me go ahead and save this as part two. I was messing with it earlier so you can see that in there. So anyway, save that. And let's uh, go into front view and I make sure my uh, screencast keys are playing there. Okay. Yeah, okay. So let's tab into edit mode with our island selected. And let's select the top part of it about like so. And let's put our 3D cursor right there and hit the period button so we're scaling around it. Make sure it's centered up where we need to be. Uh, maybe about right there. So, okay, back down to front view. And let's just scale it down. Also, make sure that you have the proportional editing turned on so we get a nice transition. So we'll scale that down, kind of in, inwards a little bit, and then vertically also. So maybe about like so. I'll just bring it up just a tad. Okay. So now that looks a little more relative to the size of the island we're going for, or the one I'm going for in the tutorial. Anyways, uh, let's grab the ocean now and go to our material settings, or the texture settings, I guess, right there. Ocean color. Let's go ahead and I want to deaden that down, but if we deaden this down, the image or the uh, influence, the actual color of the ocean will not be. I mean, it'll start fading this. So I guess what we could do is just select this, make it that nice dark bluish gray, about like so, and then we'll come back to the textures and lower the intensity of the texture map down quite a bit. Mm, that might be too far. Let's make it 0.35. You kind of see the effect of it right there if we change the view, view type. You can see from that to about that, 0.35, we'll try that. Okay, uh, one other thing I wanna do before I do a, another test render is um, right now, the only really rough areas of the island are gonna be at the very top of the mountain and then kinda in the dirt area where it kinda faded in. So I'd like to go ahead and give it a little bit more roughness around the sand area because, you know, sand, if you've ever seen a beach, it's not just a straight, smooth path of sand. It's got like where the waves have crashed onto it, the wind's blowing, it's like, tiny little sand dunes here and there. So let's add one more uh, texture here and we'll call this one sand bumps. Okay, and it's gonna stay the cloud settings. But we're gonna make it a lot smaller. Let's make it 0.1 and let's give it some more depth, maybe about six and then turn on colors or color ramp right there and let's go ahead and set that alpha on the black all the way up to one. Okay, and now come down here to mapping and change it from generated to UV. Okay, go and collapse all that. Come down here under influence, uncheck color, and check normal. Okay, so now we'll get a little bit more bumpiness there in the sand area if I kind of see what it affects it there. Okay, so I'll just make it one. And like I said before, go ahead and save this. I'll go ahead and pause recording while it's rendering and be right back. Okay, so I'm feeling a little bit better about that. The uh, the water doesn't look quite as shallow right there and that helps give it a bit bigger size and then the overall s size of the island is shorter so that kind of makes it look like it's a little bit 
covers more area, if that makes sense. So once we get in the atmospheric perspective and the mist settings and all that, that'll really help it look a lot bigger. So also once we get the vegetation and everything on there, that'll help too. Everything's going to help. Just wait and see. Okay. Uh, next, I want to go ahead and create some rocks that we're going to scatter around there. So let's go ahead and escape out of here. And I'm going to just go ahead and shift A. I'm going to add a cube. And let's move it center up on there. Let's move it out over here. So maybe let's go control comma so we're scaling around the object center instead of the 3D cursor again. And now I'm going to go uh, tab into edit mode, W, subdivide smooth. And let's raise this window here. Let's give it three cuts and scale it down some more. Okay, and now we're going to add a displacement modifier. But first, I'm going to go ahead and set that to smooth shading. Okay, now we'll come over here to the modifiers. And we're going to go ahead and add a subdivision surface first. And then we'll give it a few more views there. And then we're going to add a displace. And what the displace modifier is going to do is kind of give us a nice rocky texture, but it's going to be a procedural texture at the same time. So we're not going to have to save any images for it and you know it'll still look nice and, and rocky so um, so we got that uh, modifier on there we need to go ahead and set up the texture map that's going to act as the displacement so let's come over to our texture maps create a new one and let's just call this one rocky okay and uh, the type of clouds let's use uh, Voronoi F2, I believe. Actually, I got my other my old settings up over here in the other window. Let me double check the settings there. Yes, Voronoi F2. And we're going to go a hard scale there. Colors, ramp. And set this all the way up to 100% uh, uh, opacity. And then the size of the clouds, we're going to bump that all the way up to 2. And the depth, we're going to drop that down to 1. So we have a very plain texture here. So let's come back to our modifiers. And right here under there, we're going to say Rocky. And you can see that it automatically deforms our sphere, or our cube, that has the smooth setting on it to this very odd shape. So what we want to do now is mess with some of the settings over here. So the strength, we're going to knock that down to about, let's make it about 0.5, okay? And then the mid-level, we're going to play with that just a little bit. That doesn't really, that just kind of affects where the displace starts affecting it. Okay, um, a good way to edit the rock is, I mean, you can play with the the settings here. And then if you wanted to go back into here, you could change the size, you know, and make it, the smaller the size, the more cragginess you have, if that makes sense. So let's make it, yeah, 1.2 would be a nice even number. And then if you tab into edit mode, actually, let's go back to our, our uh, modifiers, and turn on this little guy right here, use modifier while in edit mode. So if we tab into edit mode, you can see that it's still taking effect and if we move part of it we have our, our uh, proportional editing still turned on so we can scale this up and the displacement kind of just grows essentially it doesn't kind of remap itself at all it just kind of grows along with the shape that you're building so okay so this will work as a first rock um, before I go any further though I'm gonna go ahead and give it a material let's give it a rocky material, just rock, okay, and then I'll go to textures, create a new one, and this one, I guess we'll just call it rock texture, okay, and these colors are good, I'm going to change it to also Voronoi F2 and hard, and depth to one, a lot bigger, let's go to both there so we can kind of see an effect, and we need to turn on color ramp, Go ahead and set that all the way up. Now I want to have a nice grayish 
colored rock, but I don't want it to be black and white like this is. So let's grab these colors and make them a little less, you know, contrasted. So we'll just shades of gray right there. And I'd also like to, you know, let's give it more than one depth, about like so. And then we'll also set that to the normal settings. affect that a little bit more Let's just make it well five looks good in the in the preview on the sphere there but if we go to like the monkey head it looks a little too rough so let's make it 2.5 that's a little bit better and let's make it a little less shiny let's change the specular level way down hardness way down about like so and you know what maybe go back to the Textures here. Let's maybe make the colors a little, a little more contrasted. So we'll set that dark gray a little bit darker. Yeah, I think that'll work. Okay, so now we've got one rock, and we need to make a couple of more because if you've ever, <laughs> if you've ever seen rocks, none of them are really the same. So let's create a, a couple of more rocks, a couple more rocks, to where we have some variation here. So let's scale that up and then maybe just grab it, push and pull until we got something that looks different enough to be a totally separate rock. Let's make that one kind of flat. Maybe make this area here a little bit bigger. Okay, and let's add, shift D, duplicate that, and edit that and make another one. Maybe make that an overall a little bit smaller. Okay, so what do you say? One more. A little bit bigger. Maybe a little taller as well. Now let's fix that area right there. So like that whole loop, this uh, Alt S to make it a little fatter. Oops, Aye. cursor popping around. Okay, I think that'll work. Make it overall a little smaller. Okay, so let's select all these rocks here, and we're gonna put them in there in a group, so we can distribute all of them into one particle system. So we'll go to group right there, create new group, and we'll just call this one rocks. Okay, now uh, if we leave them here, they're going to render in the scene, and we want them to render in the scene, but we don't want them to render in the scene like this. So let's move them over to their own layer, and move them over to right there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then we'll grab the island itself and come to our particle system now, add a new one. And let's just go ahead and name this one Rocks. <clears throat> We're going to change the type to Hair. Okay. And the emission, let's drop that way down to about 500, about half the size there. And go ahead and turn on Advanced right there. We're going to need that here in a little bit. And now we're going to go all the way down to the Render Settings there. And instead of Path, we're going to choose Group. And now we can click on there and say Rocks. I'm going to grab those rocks we just made and scatter them nicely across the island. Now, um, one thing we can do here is just to pick random and it'll, instead of grouping them all together as they are in the group, it'll, it'll kind of uh, randomize them a little bit better. And you can just play with these settings here and it'll give you a better view. Now, as you can tell, my uh, Blender's kind of slowing down here because we have those, all those rocks, and they have those subdivision surface modifiers on them, which is really making our scene geometry be really high. So let's go to that layer that we put the rocks on. Let's go in here and select each one of these, and we've got three subdivisions. So we want to render three, but we don't want to view three. So let's go ahead and turn those off. Make sure we have that set to three on all the renders. Go ahead and turn that off. Turn it off and 
turn it off. Okay, so now we'll go back to first layer right there. And you can see it's behaving a lot better. Now, right now it's taking in all those rocks and, and scattering them across the whole island. Now, we don't really want that to happen. We want to have a little bit, a little bit more control. So let's go to our object data and create a vertex group for our rocks. There we go. And let's go to our top view and go to weight paint. And we already have this vertex group selected. So let's go to T. Okay, it's already 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 open. Uh, weight paint. Hello. Weight paint. No. It's not letting me go into weight paint mode. There we go. That was weird. Oh, and it has the plane selected. Well, select the landscape there. Weight paint. There we go. Hmm. For some reason, it wouldn't let me. Maybe I still had the rock selected in the other layer or something. Anyways, okay, that must have been what happened because I don't have that vertex group here anymore. So let's go ahead and create that again. Rocks. Okay, so now zoom in here a little bit and let's just kind of paint here around the edges. And one other thing that will help this go a little smoother is to turn off the subdivision surface on here as well. So that will help us paint a lot smoother. So let's make our brush a little smaller. It's covering a little bit too much area there. Okay. So that'll probably be pretty good. Let's let's call that one a day. Let's go ahead and save that. And one side note, you might have noticed uh, in part one I used Blender 2.62 and now I'm using 2.63 so not a lot of difference there's a few bug fixes and everything like that so uh, you should be you should be good if you still have 2.62 and if you have 2.63 already you should be fine following part one with no issues so anyways let's go back to our particle settings all the way down to vertex groups and now we'll under density go ahead and select the rocks and as we can see sometimes if you scroll the timeline it kind of adjust their settings. Uh, so a lot of the rocks are out in the water and we want a few of them out in the water to help break it up like you see here some of these rocks are out in the water that kinda gives it a more natural realistic look but there's kinda too many of them out there so let's uh, go back to our weight paint and let's uh, hit the subtract and kinda just go in here and kinda clean up the edges a little bit so there's not so many rocks out there in the water. Okay, that'll probably work about like so. Okay, back to object mode. Look through our camera. And now, we got the rocks positioned pretty much the way we want. But I would like to add a little bit more variation to their size and kind of the way they're rotated around. So let's go to our particle settings again. And up here to physics and it, right now it's got the size set at 0 0.05 so if we change that we can make them a little bit bigger and then if we change the random size you can see that it affects the sizes of some of them more than others so like so and then if we go to rotation go ahead and check that and set some randomness there Rotate around the normals. And maybe make the original velocity a little smaller. Okay. So I like I like the way that's looking. Like I said, I'll go ahead and pause recording and go ahead and give her a test render. So be right back. Okay, so that's done rendering. And you can see, boom, it automatically makes the island look a little bit bigger but uh, honestly it, it still doesn't look as big as I'd like it to so we need to make those rocks a little bit smaller and then also to get a better looking render we should turn on some ambient occlusion so we get some nice light filling in these sh dark shadow areas so let's come down here let's set the samples up to 10 so 
So turn on ambient occlusion there in your world settings and set the samples to 10. So go ahead and do that and come back to our our uh, particle settings and let's go ahead and set the zoom in here, set the normals even smaller. And maybe make a few more. Right now we have 500. Let's go ahead and bump that up to the original 1000. And that'll put a lot more on there and we can make them smaller. And in doing so, maybe we can uh, put a, 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 you know, edit the uh, the weight paint for the shoreline. Maybe have them come a little closer to the water. Set our strength up there so we can paint it a little. Oh, there we go. A blur turned on for some reason instead of add. Okay. Okay, that'll work. Okay, now one quick thing, back to object mode, there we go. Um, one th quick thing, if you don't like the way the rocks are set, and, you, and you're like, well, I got everything else set up the way I want, but the rocks aren't looking the way I want them to. You can come up here to your uh, particle settings, and under seed, you can click that. It's kind of doing the same thing that we when we were picking the, sh the shape of the island, the shape of the landscape. You can kind of just go through there until you get a nice layout the way that looks closer to the, the way you want, so... I think that one will work. Yeah. Seed number 10. Let's go ahead and save that. And again, I'll test render, and then we'll be right back. Okay, so the size of the rock looks a little bit better, and the shadows are brightened up a little bit. Um, however, the uh, ambient occlusion kind of killed some of the, the bumps there on the sand as well. So let's make them a little deeper. Grab our island there, go up to, or turn on material, then go to uh, down here to sand bumps. And let's go ahead and set the influence there. Go ahead and make that to two. Okay, so we'll go ahead and save that. And one thing I want to do before moving on is, with these rocks is let's come down to the physics there again and set the random size a little bit more. And then maybe the size itself a little bit bigger because I'd like to see some bigger rocks, maybe some more bolder size ones. And then amongst the smaller rocks as well. So let's make the size 0.15 there and then the random let's just go ahead and pump that all the way up to 1.0 and then I think we'll get some nice variation there in the boulders to, to, to more of the smaller stones so okay so we're gonna call that a day on the rocks go ahead and save and just to save uh, space here or save uh, uh, computer power while we're not really using the rocks anymore let's go ahead and turn that particle system off and while we're here, let's go ahead and rename this rocks. Okay. Now we named it in the particle system itself rocks, but uh, here in the modifier it wasn't renamed, so we'll just name it there. Okay. Now, go ahead and save this guy. Now I'm going to take you on the interwebs to, if I can find it, there we go, um, to cgtextures.com. I think we visited here before. Uh, but if you haven't, just go to cgtextures.com and you can find all kinds of images and texture maps and things like that to use in your 3D projects. They're all, it's all com uh, Creative Commons, excuse me, open source. Uh, you can use these in your stuff for no, no problems. So anyways, let's go to our, down here under Nature, click that, and then come down here to Trees. And luckily, it already has a few trees that have gotten the background cut out, so that'll be real handy. Um, this tree right here in particular, I'm going to use this one. Just go ahead and click on there. And it's got a few different versions of it, so let's use this one. And it's going to open in here. And uh, I'm using a Firefox, uh, this is the browser I'm using, Firefox plugin called Down the Mall. And it's a real handy thing where you can just kind of pick the folder you want to save stuff into and uh, then you can use this one click thing. So I'm going to save them into my Blender files, Island Texture. So I'll go ahead and hit OK. And it'll download that. And then I'll go ahead and click on this guy as well. And do the same thing, DTA one click. OK, now this being a tropical island, we probably want some palm trees in here too. So let's go ahead and close that one. And let's scroll through here until, let's go, I think it was on page three where there are some palm trees. Yes, so let's grab 
just a couple of them, huh? Let's grab this one, and then we're going to have to go into GIMP and cut it out. So let's see, this one, this one will probably be the easier one to cut out, so we'll go with that one. Save it in the same place. And now one one more thing I want to get on here that will just help help give your 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 island a little bit more uh, realism is to uh, have some grass on there instead of just only trees and rocks. We can throw some grass on there. So let's go to our grass tall. Kind of scroll through here until we find something that we can kind of cut out. Okay, nothing really there. Grass dead. I, I downloaded this once before, but I can't recall which page it was on. So let's just go to grass there. That looks like. Tell you what, let me pause recording and, and look through here so I don't have to waste time. So be right back. Okay, let's do this. We'll just go to uh, back to the grass tall there and just uh, let's just grab this guy here and uh, we'll cut some out in GIMP and, uh, and we'll layer it in there. So let's go ahead and save it back to the same place. Okay, got all our, our trees and everything we want. So let's go ahead and open up GIMP here. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and open, let's see, uh, G folder, Blender files, island, and then textures. Okay. So uh, let's start with the trees. Now on our island, we want the, as I mentioned before in part one, I believe, we want the sunlight coming from the, the top right, essentially. So this tree is all good, but this tree actually not that one this tree the lights coming from the opposite side so let's go and open that guy and I'm going to go image transform flip horizontally and then just go ahead and save and all done okay close that guy out and now let's open up that palm tree right there and we need to cut it out from the background so let's do the select by color we're going to change the threshold one fifteen. Let's make it uh, let's make it thirty. Oops, thirty. There we go. And we'll just select in here. And it selected most of the blue, but there's still some down here that we need to do. So we'll hold down Shift and then select down there. And that should select most of that blue. Now, if I grab my lasso, I can hold down Shift and select everything else besides the tree there and down here as well okay and now I'm going to go select invert okay should just have the tree selected itself now and I'm going to go edit copy and then edit paste oops edit pa well what's going on here still selecting something there edit paste as new layer okay I guess it was <laughs> the lasso was doing something crazy, so I guess we got to edit copy again, and then edit paste as. This is not. <laughs> this is not cooperating, so Alt E, paste as. New layer. There we go. Sometimes if the mouse don't work, the keyboard will do it. So now we have the tr the. Uh, the tree on this layer here but we still have selected so to, let's, we can go either edit or actually select none or you can hit sh control shift control a there we go we can turn that layer off and you can see our cutout tree now there's still some blue in there but uh, I think it's transparent enough to be able to map on top of itself so if, so if I duplicate this layer you can see that we can layer them on top of each other pretty pretty easily so we'll go ahead and delete that and I'm going to let's brighten it up and try to get it to match the the brightness of that tree. If I go back in here to trees. Okay, back to GIMP now. Let's try to get this tree kind of more bright greenish like this color. So let's go to uh, colors, hue and saturation. And we'll hit the master there and set the saturation. Okay, I think we're on the wrong layer here. Let's go and escape out of there. Yeah. Have to go ahead and delete that layer. I thought it did before. Okay, so now colors, hue saturation. 
There we go. Get it nice and bright. And maybe darken it just a little bit. Maybe change the hue a little more greenish. Okay, that'll work. So now let's go File, Save As. We'll just call it Palm Tree PNG. Okay. Brings up the little export file. Merge visible layers, yes. And then the PNG. Do not want to save the background color. We want it transparent, so we'll go ahead and save. And, okay, so we got our palm tree now. Um, let's open that grass layer up real quick. Or not grass layer, but the grass texture there. Okay. And now let's just grab our lasso and just kind of just click in here randomly and just get some nice looking grass shapes in here. And then we're going to go select feather, and let's feather it. Uh, let's go three pixels, okay? And then edit, copy, edit, paste as new layer. We go and turn that layer off. Now select none. And select none, and then grab the move tool. Move this guy over, and let's crop around it. Get the crop tool right there. drag it in and there we go okay so now let's save this as call this one grass delete the jpeg dot type in dot png okay and again it brings up the export settings export and all good okay so now I think we got all the textures we need let's go back to blender okay and we're gonna create a couple of uh, uh, materials or create one material and then we can copy it over for all the, the different uh, trees and everything that we're putting in so let's create another material call this one tree one okay and we're gonna set the specular all the way to zero and the hardness all the way to zero and let's go all the way down to shadow and we want to turn on receive transparent that way the transparency of the PNG uh, will when it throws a shadow it'll be in the shape of the visible part of the transparent PNG if that makes sense instead of just a square that the you know the image is uh, anyway so let's go to terrain and do the same thing because it's going to be the shadows from the trees are going to be thrown onto the terrain so we're going to make sure that's turned on too okay back to tree one go to our texture settings and scroll up there create a new one new image okay call this one tree one okay Collapse that guy, go to image, open, we go to textures, and let's go to our thumbnail view. Let's go ahead and rename this one if I can. Okay, I guess you can't rename it there in the browser there for Blender, so we'll just choose that one. And then go ahead and turn on pre-multiply right there. And image sampling, use the alpha, make sure that's turned on. Go ahead and show the alpha. Okay, everything's good. Mapping, we're going to set it to UV. And I th I'm going to turn on alpha there and go to our material settings again. Go to transparency, expand that alpha all the way to zero. Okay, so now if we look through our different settings here, you can see that the tree is now mapped uh, nicely with the transparency and everything. Okay, <clears throat> so we've got tree one set up. Let's go ahead and create a vertex group just like we did on the, on the rocks. So we'll grab our tree and go to our vertex groups in here go ahead and create a new one call this one trees oops select all of it come on there we go trees 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 one there we go and go ahead and go to weight paint and add is turned on so let's just gently brush in here kind of just randomly in here okay some parts would have thicker trees than others, so we'll just do like so. And you know what? While we're at it, let's go ahead and create the the uh, vertex group for the other guys as well. So we're going to go trees 2, 
and we'll do kind of just do the same thing paint that in here nice and random and go ahead and go trees three we'll, we'll call this one palm trees okay and those those can be more out on the beach area if, if we want them to so we can bring those further out towards the shoreline then maybe a few of them are up there on a mountain top there we go and last but not least the grass so we'll kind of do the same thing there that can be out on the beach a little bit as well not too much on the mountains because the trees are going to be taking up a lot of that okay so that's pretty well set all right let's go ahead and save back to object mode there we go and go to our particle settings now add a new one and let's call this one trees one okay go ahead and set this to trees one okay and this time we're going to leave it on an emitter this is not going to be the the uh, hair strands like the rocks are this is going to be something different it's an emitter and the reason we're leaving it as an emitter is because we're going to come down here to our render settings and instead of using group like we did with the rocks we're going to use billboard and the only way you can use billboard is if it's set to emitter okay now settings for the billboard uh, the billboard object is basically which object that the billboards are pointed at and if you don't choose anything, it's set default to the, the default camera. So if you click in here and said camera, it'll work. Or if you just leave it empty, it also will work. So um, we need to tell it to use the material number two, which is that trees material that we just made. And we need to come down here to vertex group, turn that to trees one. Okay and now a couple of settings we need to do up here in the uh, velocity or excuse me the emission settings right now if we scroll this you can see that they're now the particles are now nicely on our vertex group like we want but they're animating and trees don't move around like that that's just silly so what we have to do is tell uh, the emissions to, the, to in order for them to stay still they have to be unborn if that makes sense they ha they can't be started yet so let's set the starting point actually I have to change the endpoint first to something big say 5000 and then the start point also at 5000 so now we don't see them anywhere that's because they haven't been born yet we have to tell them go down to our render settings and say show the unborn ones so now we can see that they are nicely mapped on there and they're also not animating around so there we go now um, we need to change some of these settings a little bit right now the trees are way too small so let's do this uh, also one thing we need to do is if we zoom in here real close you can see that each one of these squares is sunken halfway into the island so when we render this with, e with a tree on each of these squares the trees are going to be cut off in the middle so we need to give it some offset we'll do that here on the Y so if we scroll that up We'll go all the way to one that'll be kind of hovering over the over the surface so we kind of want to embed them into the ground a little bit so let's just go about 0.85 right there in the Y settings okay now um, we can change the size right here under physics same thing we did with the rocks make those a little bit bigger give them some random size to make them a little more natural let's look through our camera see what that's looking like okay maybe a little bit bigger and I think that's about all we need to do for that. So we might need to make them a little bit bigger. I'll go ahead and do a test render just to see. So I'm going to save that. Go ahead and test render. Pause recording. Be right back. Okay, as you can see, I went and uh, escaped out of the render process because a uh, the trees are, are still too small. We need to make them a little bit bigger. Maybe put some more in there. But one thing I noticed, I was like, man, that ambient occlusion sure is throwing some of that uh, those shadows off and I looked and it's, the factor is still set to one I forgot to change that to let's make it about point two and so that'll make it render a little bit better you can still see the shadows and everything so let's escape out of there go to our particle settings make the size a little bit bigger make it about point two five maybe random size maybe about point five five okay I'll go ahead and save that and now I'll render and uh, it should look a little bit better when I come back so be right back 
Okay, so that looks a little bit better. I still think the trees could stand to be a little bit bigger, but uh, we're certainly getting there. So let's escape out of there, and let's go ahead and set the size to 0.3, and then we'll we'll call that good. I'm not even going to do a test render on that one because we are running out of time here. Uh, so now I want to use those other textures we made, but I don't want to have to set it all up over again. So it's going to be easy. We'll just come in here and create another texture, and we'll go ahead and go tree one. And this time, we're going to duplicate this. We're going to copy it into another material. So we'll hit the number two right there beside it. Rename it to tree two. Come over to our texture settings. Hit the two beside that one. Name this one to tree two. Come down here to our image settings there. Hit the two beside there. Got to hit that two a lot because <laughs> it, it, you know, otherwise we'll overwrite something on the original material. So. Let's go ahead and open up that other tree. Uh, thumbnail view. See this? Did we use this one already? Let's use that one. Accept. Okay. There we go. Go back to our material settings just to make sure. We got still two different ones. Yes. Okay. Particle settings. Going to do the same thing. Hit the plus sign to create a new system. We'll call this one trees two. Okay. And I'm going to do the same thing again, like we did in the materials. Under settings, I'm going to click on here. And we're going to say trees one, and it's going to copy the settings from trees one. But I still need to hit that trees, that two right there beside it. Go ahead and rename that. There we go. Now, when you copy the settings, it copies pretty much everything except for the vertex group down here. So we need to go ahead and say trees two. It's no big deal. And this, another thing we can do to give it some more randomness is like we did with the rocks. Come up to seed. And kind of just pop that around until it gets as a little bit more random. And then if you, if if your trees are kind of out in the water for some odd reason, you can't figure out why, just move your your uh, time slider and it'll pop everything back up into the correct vertex group like it needs to be. Okay, so now we got two different types of trees. Um, we might even uh, change some of their random size right there. Maybe make that 0.65. Okay, maybe put a different number of them. Right now we have a thousand, so let's make it uh, 1,200, 1,200. Okay, and again, before I scroll that around, no? Okay, I thought I saw some out in the water, but guess not. Uh, before I uh, do another test render, I'm just going to go ahead and chug right along, go ahead and create the palm tree material. So we're going to hit the plus, go ahead and copy. We'll copy tree two this time, hit the number there. Also, tree three, palms. There we go. And go to our texture settings. The number there, tree three. Okay. The number there. And we'll call this one palm trees. And then open up palm tree.png, except. There we go. Come back here, make sure we've still got the three different textures. Yes. Okay. Particle settings. Go ahead and create a new one. Call this one palm trees. Now, if you start adding more and more particle systems, your 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 blender might slow down. So you can always just go back to your modifiers and just turn them turn them off in the viewport as you go. So that might save you some some uh, aggravation with things getting slow. Okay, so go ahead and hit the the settings there. We'll go ahead and choose trees two again and hit the number. Change it to trees three. You can name it whatever you want. Trees three palms. Okay, and then we'll scroll all the way down to the vertex group. Choose palm trees. There we go. And make sure, oh, another thing we need to do with uh, the previous tree set that we made. Make sure you set the render to, right now we're using the palm trees, which is the fourth material. Let's so go back here and choose material four. And then we need to come back up here to trees two and make sure we tell that to use material three. Okay, so on our palm trees, go back there, select that. Let's make them quite a bit bigger as the texture map is a little bit different. Let's make it 0.4 on the size, random size. And then let's make a f fewer of them this time instead of more. Let's make it, uh, let's make 750. And then we can see some out in the water. So hit our scroll bar, or our uh, time slider, and it'll move them back around. Okay, getting there slow but sure. Go ahead and save. Uh, one more thing I want to do before we try another test render is the grass settings. Uh, so let's go back to our materials. Copy that yet again. Create another. There, hit the number. Call this one grass. 
Okay. And go to our texture settings. Hit the number. Brass. And hit the number. Brass. And open up our grass PNG. Accept. And then again, make sure we didn't override anything. Yes, good. Okay. And finally, the grass particle system. And we're going to copy palm trees. Why not? And hit the number there. Call it grass. And all the way down to the vertex groups. Grass. There we go. And this needs to be a little bit smaller. So let's make this 0.15. And then the random size can be all the way up to 1 if we like. And since the grass is going to be smaller, uh, we need to make a lot more of them. So let's make 2,000 of those. And then grab our slider there. And OK, I think we're about ready to do a test render. One thing I'd like to do, though, before we do that, if we look at our test render, um, the island kind of looks flat. So let's change our camera settings just a bit. Grab our camera. Go to our camera object data there. Right now, the focal length is set to 50. And that's kind of a zoomed lens. So I think I might have talked about this in part one. But uh, let's make that a little smaller. Let's make it uh, 30. And then we'll actually zoom the camera in a little bit. That'll give it a little bit more depth, I think. OK, so let's go ahead and save that. And I'll do a test render and go ahead and pause recording. And we'll see what it looks like when I come back. So, OK, and here's the final render on that one. Um, I'm not seeing enough sand, so I think what I want to do is thin some of these trees up and go in there and uh, make the uh, vertex group come up shore just a little bit more and then maybe thin it out there on the mountain too so we can see more of the hillside of the cliff face. So let's go and escape out and some of those look like they should not be out in the water, but they are. So anyways, let's go to weight paint. Let's go to our top view so we can see things a little bit better. And let's thin things up around the water line so we don't have a lot of that coming out into the water, looking unnatural. So let's do that with just about, let's do that with all of these vertex groups because none of them should really come out into the water except for the rocks. So let's just thin that up like so. When it gets to this point in the creation of the island, it's, it's kind of just a kind of personal preference, and, and you can kind of play with it how you want it to look. If you want the trees and stuff to go out in the water, then you know maybe it's at a tsunami or something, and it's sitting lower in the water than usual. Maybe it would have trees out in the water, but for my purposes here, uh, I don't want it that, that those that far out in the water. So uh, actually, this is the rocks. Oops. Go ahead and add some of that back. Okay, so trees, good, good, good. Okay, I think that'll do it. And now back to our particle settings. Trees one. Let's drop that down from a thousand to let's make it. Uh, let's get let's get crazy. Let's make it six fifty instead. And the trees here, we're gonna make that. Let's make it eight hundred. And then the palm trees, let's make that five hundred. And make those a little bit bigger because I noticed in the render that those kind of look small compared to the rest of the trees. So let's make those a little bit bigger down to the physics there, 0.5. There we go. And then the grass, maybe make that a little bit bigger too. I didn't really notice it at all. Let's make it 0.25. Okay. And its number is fine. Okay. So um, I think we'll give this a test render and running out of time. So we'll call that all of part two. And in part three, we'll get in here and. Uh, quickly go over uh, some of the mist settings and give it some depth of field, not depth of field, but a feeling of depth with uh, the atmospheric perspective and the cloud background and things like that. So uh, go ahead and render this out and we'll be right back. Okay, there we go. Looks, I think that looks a little bit better. Um, yeah, so in part three we'll come up and we'll add the, the distance uh, effect to it and, and then a cloud background as well so might tweak some of the the island geometry just a little bit but uh, I'll save that for then so for now we're done with part two and stay tuned I'll catch you in part three we'll finish this guy up